recording now. Okay, we are back on the record on the Angela Voss and Bobby Knight matter. Mr. Knight, uh, during the last session, uh, you made a request. Um, and it was along the lines of being able to, to restart. Um, and in thinking about that, um, it did occur to me that um, I have to consider requests, and it's a form of a motion, um, and would I, in considering is whether your request is based upon this new evidence, which is now part of this record. Um, and I'm looking at your request as a uh, potential, as a motion to um, amend the evidence to reflect the pleadings, no, amend the pleadings to reflect the evidence. Um, and that is a motion that can be brought, um, but there's a caution to all this, and that is when you bring a motion to amend the pleadings to, to reflect the evidence that's been presented in a trial, which has been admitted into a trial, it doesn't open up this big door to keep on adding more stuff. Okay. Um, and and uh, certainly that is brought in, it is a very narrow area. This is a unusual circumstance at best, where we have a lengthy trial, which covers a very broad span of dates. March 22nd was our first day of trial, so almost exactly two months that we've been in this trial. Now, we haven't been in session the entire time. As I've indicated to the parties, and that was an issue brought by Mr. Knight early in this proceeding, how I think that I'll paraphrase. Objection, we should not be able to bring up matters that have occurred after this began, meaning the trial. And my response was, no, this is a parenting plan. And when we deal with child custody, we deal with what's going on. Um, we don't have this cutoff date. Um, and, and so, given the length of things, um, it, things evolve, and, and I understand that. Um, I'm not... If that was your intention, I'm not granting it today. I'm just trying to frame it. And if you wish to bring a formal request to uh, to do that, then I will consider it. Uh, but I want you to think about it first before you. Yes, sir. I'm, I'm attempting to figure out how this process works and how to be efficient from getting through this and to protect my my civil rights and my children's civil rights in the process. and get this to a finalization that will be appropriate for everyone. Well, and and I, what, what I thought about during our break was that I dismissed your, your request offhand, and I shouldn't have. I should have thought, stepped back and thought, try to place this in a, in a framework that is consistent with the court rules and the case law. It's not an automatic anything, okay? Just so everybody understands. But yes. but as soon as soon as I'm dismissive, I'm making a decision, and when I'm making a decision without properly characterizing what the request was, um, it's inappropriate. So I, I didn't mean to be well. I did mean to be dismissive, uh, but in, in rethinking this, um, I'm going to allow. 
allow you to present an argument that you think is appropriate um, to address your concerns. And I don't, I'm not just dismissing it out of hand. I'm just going to allow you to do that. But I also needed to framework it or put it in the proper framework so that the parties understand the potential of doing that. And it is there. Certainly address it. By this same token, Ms. Boss, it, it, it flies both ways on this. Okay, um, and and but when we talk about amending the pleadings, uh, you, if if this is a consideration that you would have, um, you would also consider what your pleadings already say. That so I mean, it may already be captured. Okay, that was my preliminary point. Um, so I'll hear from the others. Any other preliminary issues that uh, anybody would like to bring in Ms. Boss, you first? Um, exhibit 320A yes. is one that I neglected to bring in. Okay, and so I have. have. Okay. And I really am not certain that I have it properly. I, I don't have good notes as to whether or not we're pulling out The exhibit that was provided to the court was different than it was bench copy. If I provided a whole copy, I need to pull out pages if they're incorrect. There's nothing to number. Okay. And so and this... I was under the impression we had already solved this issue. 320 was solved, and the way it was solved was the... Um, the evidentiary rule about completeness and what I admitted and allowed you the opportunity to provide the court additional information in the form of a exhibit that addressed the concerns that you raised. I um, thought it was stipulated that only the appointments that I had put on there were going to be looked at and the rest of it would not be considered. We went through this and yep, spent a lot true. of time on it. That is that is true. And I thought I was directed to bring in a 320A that, that would have that, that would have just those the pages with those appointments on it. Okay. And so I will go ahead and pull out the emails that were in the back where they outlined the little messages. I have the okay. 320A. Okay. But the other issues of concern raised, and I think that Mr. Voss was given the opportunity to, to provide whatever he thought was appropriate to address the concerns raised about um, it being incomplete or something along those lines. So. I see it. I noticed beginning on August of 2022 that there are indications on here of visitations. Were those to be included? Um, they were entries that I had put on the calendar. I have no way of removing them from a calendar. Well, this is another one of those, and I'm just going to go back and listen to my... 320A has been proposed, and I will. And that's going to be included with my review of. Two thirty-two. So. No, 
two, two, I'm sorry, 395C. 232 is mine. Right, that's yours. So 395C, I will listen to the record, and 320A, I will do likewise, just to make sure. It's never a good idea for me to rely purely on my memory. Preliminary issues, Ms. Bus. No, no, you are. Any right. preliminary issues, Ms. Freeman? No, sir. Okay, so Ms. Bus, you were in the process of your second redirect, so you may proceed. Thank you, Your Honor. <clears throat> um, I was kind of going through a timeline, my timeline of events on the medication issue and. Um, I left out a couple of things. One being, um, I provided the clerk with a new proposed exhibit 428, um, regarding, I mentioned I communicated concerns to the WISE team. And so 428 is that email. And Mr. Boss, do you have a copy of that? Objection, Your Honor. My name is Mr. Knight. Got it. <laughs> I'm sorry, sir. Yes, I have an objection to it. It's hearsay. So, um, Ms. Um, Voss, what is the exception to the hearsay? Um, this is information I am providing to the provider for the purpose of um, medical treatment um, in, as to whether or not the therapist would be monitoring this medication. Specifically referring to the, my communication at the beginning at the bottom half of the page. Um, I, I don't know that there's an exception, a hearsay exception to um, Maciel's response at the top of the page. It's been testified to. Well, I'm going through the exception hearsay um, for the statement for, for the purposes of um, evaluation and treatment, and this is neither. Um, she is not diagnosing, or diag diagnosis and treatment, she's not diagnosing. Um, and Again, so it's the whole veracity world. So um, I fell and my arm hurts. It's being told to the doctor. The doctor is trying to figure out what the issue is to treat, and it's a broken arm. So they come to that conclusion. I fell and my arm hurt, and it is an exception to the rule. This is well afield in that in that type of. Uh, it's more of an explanation as to a host of things may relate to your concerns about her monitoring, uh, but it's certainly not diagnosis and treatment. So, um, it is not an exception to hearsay rule. The, uh, the matter will be, uh, the objection is sustained and will not be renewed at this time. Um, and so previously I um, testified that on April 21st um, 
Bryce got into trouble with school and I informed Mr. Knight. I failed to mention that I also reached out to the WISE team um, and the new therapist team. Lastly, I'll been, I haven't mentioned that there have been a number of changes with our WISE team. Um, since Mr. Knight um, fired Davida, so um, Nathan Click um, essentially terminated his services at the end of his testimony. And so we have a new case coordinator whose name is Dale. Um, Ms. Martinez. Um, and my peer, parent peer, um, for whatever reason, terminated as well, and I have a new parent peer. The entire team has changed with a very different aim um, for services, much more in line with what Mr. Knight is asserting it at trial here. Um, so, sort of a uh, whole team trying to investigate and prove his case rather than treating our children. Um, so. That's kind of been our feel um, for these changes to our services. Um, and so on the 21st, I informed Dale and Maciel um, that Rice had gotten into trouble in school and that they were afraid um, they'd missed a couple of appointments and they were having um, what appeared to be symptoms from the medication or side effects. and. Upon hearing that, they decided to terminate their um, appointment that afternoon with Rice. They chose not to see her in crisis. So when you say they have chosen to terminate, it was the team? Correct. Maciel and, and okay. Dale um, were supposed to meet with, with Rice. So Rice was at my house because there was a problem with the bus that day. So I picked them up from school. And... Uh, so instead of seeing her, Rice, um, they just yeah canceled the appointment. Um, I mentioned that um, on Monday. May 16th, Therese, the nurse practitioner, Therese Kazanke, um, said to uh, discontinue the medication. Objection hearsay. Exception. I, I previously testified to this, so. Um, but you didn't testify, but that is still. Okay, I, I, I'm just trying you, to answer that. You can that. say, as I previously testified. So. Oh, I, I, sorry. Um, but I failed to mention that um, I was told it takes three days to come out. Objection here, say. She was told by who? Back to the hearsay. It is my understanding, based on the information from Ms. Kazanke and from um, the label um, and from the pharmacist that I spoke to, that it takes three days for this to clear your system. And so I held rice um, from the time that we started to titrate down to you know, discontinuing for the three days so that they were scheduled to full return to school on Wednesday. And they returned to Mr. Knight after school. Did I offer 425? I think it was offered and it was, it was just accepted. Yeah. A couple of minutes. Yeah. Thank you. Um, next would be exhibit 426 and 427. Sir, I thought we were crossing. Why are we adding? If Keep it's, adding. If it, it's on a redirect, if these were topics of your cross, they are appropriate before the court. And so if you're, you're, uh, 
you're questioning whether it's beyond the scope, then I don't know. So I will take the objection under advisement until I hear what is being asked or Thank being addressed. Thank you, Your Honor. Exhibit 426 is, so after 425, the Exhibit 425, uh, Mr. Knight on 517, 2022, at 8.40 p.m., he initially responded, you know, about the civil procedure aspect of this issue, and the next message the following day on 518, um, is an email chain where Mr. Knight asks why Chloe is telling me that the doctor told her to stop taking her meds. And so this is that conversation. And I'd like to offer any objections to exhibit number 426. 426. Which is I guess it's part of your plan, so I can't really object too much. And to our family wizard, I already said I, I won't object to our family wizard. 426 is admitted. So that conversation ends at 7.27 p.m. And at 7.59 p.m., Mr. Knight started to text me um, threats, and that's Exhibit 427. I'd like to offer it. Okay, so with regard to um, Exhibit 427, uh, any objections? Yeah, hearsay. the witness are it appears to me by looking at it that these are when it says Bob and the arrow goes that way those would be from Mr. Knight correct so the blue portion at the top is from me from okay. the prior conversation So, Mr. Knight, are you objecting to the whole thing or just a portion of it? I'm objecting to the whole thing because she um, does not provide it in completeness because she doesn't provide the video that's in this right here that these statements refer to. So she's just making allegations without completion. Okay, it's an objection based upon completeness. Um, is there, I don't know, I can't tell. Who sent the video? Oh, I sent them video. Oh, you sent the video. Yeah, I sent the video. But so without the video, it doesn't make, uh, the, uh, she can portray this to be mean whatever it says, but the video is what this is referring to. The video is a video from Jordan Peterson concerning karma and as a clinical psychologist, his impression of what karma does. So I was referring to the video, which is from a clinical psychologist. And I didn't even watch the video. I, I just saw that he was threatening Tony Pollard, trying to kidnap his mom. Well, the court can't understand the context without the rest of the message. So, I don't know. Karma does not forgive. Pay attention. Karma is coming for you. That's, that's the message. And to try to make sense out of what Mr. Knight says is a leap for anyone most of the time. That link that is underneath there is a YouTube link. Anybody should be able to type that in, and it will pull up the Jordan Peterson YouTube video, five minute long, concerning his uh, uh, rendition of how he speaks about karma and the twisting of reality. Okay, I, I, I 
got to deal with this on a purely evidentiary basis. The objection is completeness. It is incomplete because it's contextual. And so that, when, the, when an objection is complete, completeness, then that puts it upon the person offering to provide the completeness. So, what is your response to that? I have no intention of watching the video, Your Honor. Okay, um, so you, uh, the, the, the objection is going to be sustained. Okay. Okay, so 427 is not admitted. And is Mr. Knight's comments in objection on the record? Or I'm sorry, his comment what? And his objection that he, he admitted to having sent a case and it's an objection. So okay. It's not, he wasn't testifying. I don't okay. write that stuff down. All right. Well, my testimony is that minutes after Mr. Knight um, sent the Our Family Wizard message, he sent me threatening text messages about karma coming to get me. I think that would conclude my response and testimony. Okay. So, Mr. Knight, you have an opportunity for another round of cross. Again, it's limited to... I only have a couple questions. Just, I'm sorry? I only have a couple of questions. Okay. Ms. Voss, you stated that um, concerning the school, you made the statement, we agreed uh, that Chloe needed to be stabilized before returning to school. Um, were you referring to the uh, school staff and you making this agreement? Yes. Does the school staff have medical decision making in the parenting plan? No. Does Ms. Voss have medical decision making in the parenting plan? Uh, I, I believe this has been asked and answered in terms of emergency decision making. What constitutes emergency in, uh, for Ms. Voss? Objection asked and answered. You did ask that already, but it wasn't. So. What's the difference between Mr. Knight's uh, idea of an emergency and Ms. Voss's idea of an emergency? Objection asked and answered. I don't no. think I asked it in that fashion. So it was admitted. Okay. Um, in this instance, I believe that Rice posed an imminent threat to himself or others. Clearly, you disagree. So, did I, you take uh, Rice directly to a psychological um, treatment center to make sure that it was an emergency? I know you testified as to what I did. Objection asked and answered. Okay. Um, there's actually two two questions. One was related, what did you do? The other one is, did you? And I think that on a cross, they can go back and ask that question, did you do whatever he asked about the type of center he was talking about. So, over to you. Uh, I learned about this late in trial, and I immediately contacted the triage nurse for Miss in general to find out what to do. I was not directed to bring them to the emergency room because Rice wasn't wanting to grab something at that moment. It was a different type of emergency. A different type of emergency. 
can you explain the different type of emergency from a life-threatening emergency? I have a lot. I believe this was life-threatening. I am. I don't believe I can possibly answer this question to your satisfaction. I have attempted to explain again and again. Miss Voss, did you inform Mr. Knight at all that you'd done anything over the weekend concerning Chloe's medication? I informed you in Exhibit 425. And what date was that? Uh, was I informed on that, Miss Voss? Of the document she still saw. Miss Voss, I'm asking you to testify. You need to testify if you, you can recall. I would have to look at the exhibit to be certain as to when I informed you. But again, our child is 14 years old. This was a medical decision, a mental health decision. That is within their sphere of control. That's exactly what we were told at Nathan Bennett. That Bryce didn't even have to inform me. I did so as a courtesy so that we could be on the same page. Ms. Voss, is there a parenting plan in place that you are supposed to co-parent with uh, Mr. Knight? I don't know that that's specified in the parenting plan. Are you supposed to talk to Mr. Knight about any kind of emergency issues with the children whenever they occur after you have an appointment with a doctor? Uh, I believe there is something in the parenting plan about um, when to contact you. Do you think it's appropriate for Ms. Voss to have different uh, um, abilities to win to report a, an emergency to Mr. Knight, but Mr. Knight has to report it within 24 hours of occurrence? Um, to clarify, the parenting plan does not require you to inform me of anything. The parenting plan requires me to inform you, but not for you to inform me in the future of an emergency. Did you inform me at all in a case of an emergency as the parenting plan states? I informed you as indicated in Exhibit 425. So you indicated that um, on the fourth. I didn't hear that last part. I said I informed him as indicated in Exhibit 425. So you didn't inform Mr. Knight of this until um, May 17th? That's correct. Three days after the walk in clinic? The walk in clinic was on Saturday. That was on the 14th, was it, ma'am? So you waited three whole days and, and titrated Chloe off of her medications and uh, then informed Mr. Knight of what you had done? I didn't do this. Rice is 13 and Rice made a, a decision for their mental health. I facilitated their needs by bringing them to the emergency department by helping making phone calls to the nurse practitioner. This was a decision between Rice and their health care providers. Does Rice have the phone number to the nurse hotline? No, the nurse had to leave call back. So you instigated the call to the nurse hotline? I believe I did, yes. So you instigated this whole, uh, whole process for Rice to make the decision not to be on the medication that uh, uh, a licensed practitioner had prescribed to her? I don't think I would characterize it that way, no. I did not instigate any Ms. Voss, this. how did you feel when you found out your son had tried to commit suicide over the weekend? Objection. Inflammatory. I've already testified about this. You did it on, you brought it up on your, your direct. You opened like it up. Your, your yep. testimony was based upon your feelings about everything other than going on. So I think that that was relevant and the answer to your question. How did I feel when I heard my son had attempted to take his life? I was devastated. I forgot to call. I, I called on the anniversary of her passing. I didn't call on the anniversary of her birthday. I felt so. Do you tell your oldest son that you think that uh, Mr. Knight 
or that the children will die in Mr. Knight's care if you don't take uh, control? I have told my children and my older sons that I am concerned for his and Nancy's safety under your decision in doing that. Do you think that might have been a trigger for uh, your oldest boy to remember that her, his wife had uh, allowed the daughter to die and you could have been the trigger for that? Objection inflammatory. It's all sustained. It's not growing. Ms. Voss, do you think you might be able to understand how Mr. Knight felt when his brother committed suicide? I think I can understand how a normal person would respond to that. I cannot understand how you have turned this into your deliverance. I, and I'm, I'm the aggressor. I, I cannot comprehend how you got where you're at. Ms. Voss, from your impressions from your son uh, attempting to commit suicide over the weekend, do you think that might have had influence over your decision to take Chloe to the doctor and remove her from medication that you thought she may commit suicide? With? No, the timing on that is off. And it does not jive with the evidence. So you're saying the timing was off, so you did intend to take Chloe off of the medication? Mr. Knight, I have answered this question again and again. I did not take Bryce off of their medication. I asked what to do. Made sure that Rice could get the attention they needed, medical attention they needed. So, Miss Voss, if Rice, since Rice is now off of her medication, and if she does succeed to commit suicide, would you be the responsible person for that? No, I I believe that um, you've been painting a very vivid picture of what that's going to look like, and making false claims about it being. Ms. Voss, when a person commits suicide, who makes the ultimate choice in the end? The person who does the act, but again, I don't believe that Rice would intentionally kill themselves. I believe it's quite possible they may be playing dead at the end of the world and may make, try to make people believe it is their own doing. Objection, Your Honor. She's accusing me of a crime. Miss Voss, isn't it true that you hate Mr. Knight to the point that you want him completely out of the children's lives and only having supervised visitation two hours out of the month and cannot feed the children any food during that time? Isn't that how you see Mr. Knight? He has testified that I do not hate you. You have roughly encapsulated my proposed parenting plan, but it's not based on hatred. It's based on concern for your mental Ms. Voss, isn't it true that you are the only one here that has a medical uh, diagnosis from a s clinical psychologist or a forensic psychologist that states that you have the likelihood of having a personality disorder? You probably have ground control, Mr. Knight. You've asked those questions. You've answered those questions okay. at least one time or another. So, Ms. Voss? Ms. Voss, you stated that uh, you chose to titrate Chloe off of the medication uh, per the walk-in clinic doctor's uh, recommendation before you spoke with Therese, the prescribing doctor. Is that not what you stated? That is not what I stated. Are you sure that's not what you stated? I am. Um, we'll see what the record's reflecting that, huh? Um... <clears throat> Is it true that you did not return Chloe to Mr. Knight and did not return Chloe to the school until afternoon on Wednesday? No. Would the records reflect that Chloe did not attend morning classes at the school? I dropped them to school first thing in the morning. I dropped them off. I have no reason to believe they didn't go straight to the classroom. 
Ms. Foss, is that the proper way to transfer it under the temporary order? Excuse me? Under the temporary order that is in place for transfer of the children, the transfer of the children is to take place on Mondays at 6 p.m. in front of the police station. By Chloe coming, uh, being transferred on the school bus through the school, did you follow the temporary order? I didn't say that Rice took the school bus um, to school. I brought Rice to school. And no, the parenting plan, or the, the order you're referring to, I've, I've already a answered the question as to, no, I did not return them at 6 o'clock on Monday. I testified that I brought them to school Wednesday morning, and they were free to go home at the school. After you titrated them off of the medication uh, for their uh, extreme anxiety and extreme depression. After they, Rice, followed their doctor's instructions to discontinue the medication. Isn't it true that the records reflect in the WISE team pro, uh, program's uh, records that on Thursday uh, the 12th, Rice had reported that everything was fine with their medication. They had no side effects. They reported directly to Maciel and the case staff coordinator. I don't know that you're not just making that up. I have not seen any such record. Ms. Foss, are you trying to state uh, facts into uh, a situation you weren't a present at? You're asking me questions. I'm sorry. You said the 12th? Yes. Which would have been the Thursday prior to the incident, not yesterday. So I got confused on dates there. Um, no, Rice did not talk to Dale or Maciel on Thursday. Rice was in their room while we had a team meeting for Hayden. Maciel never came out as I thought she was going to, to see the children again. What about on the 8th? I don't know. I don't have the lineup. Could that have been the appointment at Mr. Knight's house? Do you have something to refresh my memory? Not at this point in time. Ms. Right, uh, Ms. Foss, by making an agreement with the school that Chloe needed to be stabilized before returning to the school, did that give you the authority to be the one who stabilizes the child, and wouldn't that be considered a medical decision? I informed the principal what was going on. The principal is responsible for the safety of students, and the principal... suggested that, yeah, maybe we should make sure they're off this medication. We agreed um, after I informed her that we'd already, we had already started the process. So you had informed the principal that you had already started detitrating prior to making the agreement with them that she had to stabilize that that process had begun. Did you not testify that the walk-in clinic said that Therese, the prescribing doctor, should be the one who should make the decisions to titrate down or not? No, that was not what I testified. I, the walk-in clinic told Rice and I to start titrating it down. They follow up immediately Monday morning with Therese Gazzanti because she prescribed it and they couldn't 
didn't want to manage it any further than that. Isn't it true you, the walk-in clinic, had absolutely no collateral information on what was going on with Rice's prescription because they were not the prescribing parties? As I understand the way electronic medical records work, they had the records in their system. They were aware. They could see when it was prescribed, by whom, when, uh, and they had information from Rice as to what they were experiencing. Is it a custom to have a doctor who knows nothing about a case make a major decision as to change medications uh, whenever on, it would not make a lot of difference if you wait till the primary care provider who prescribed the medication is available uh, two days, uh, less than two, or on a Monday. Your question assumes that it would not make any difference. The child was thinking about hurting themselves or others. Ms. Boss, do you have a psychological degree? No, I don't. I How can you determine uh, the need of a medication if you or don't have a PhD or a MD? I am a parent who brought their child to a medical provider, and the medical provider told us what to do. As a parent, I believe it's my job to provide information, to share information, to listen to what providers say. I don't need to have an MD to be a parent. Does Mr. Knight need uh, any type of extra degrees or anything to be a parent? No. So with the lawful order given to him through Thurston County on a lawful parenting plan of him having medical decision making and him making a medical decision to put Chloe onto a medication for her extreme anxiety and extreme depression that had been co uh, co in a collusion with medical providers uh, you chose to take her off of it. Why do you think your choice was better than Mr. Knight's? You're misrepresenting my testimony, in fact. Why do you think yours, uh, your parental abilities is better than Mr. Knight's? In a general sense, I listen to providers. I reach out to providers. I provide accurate information. And I'm sure they have access to all the appropriate records and information that are needed. I don't misrepresent facts to try to drive them in a direction that I would like for them to go. I go to the provider to find out what's wrong instead of to tell them what's wrong. Did you not just go to the walk-in clinic and tell the walk-in clinic that the medication that the daughter had been prescribed was wrong and you wanted her off of it? No, that's not at all what I testified to and that's not what happened. Your Honor, I believe the evidence proves opposite. I rest. First of all, you're not testifying right now, so that was just a comment that the court's not going to consider. Okay. Ms. Fox, you have an opportunity to, I don't know how many times you've been on direct, so one of the follow-up directs, if you wish, based upon anything that you answer to during the cross, if you wish. No, Your Honor. I'd prefer to move on to my initial questioning, my direct questioning of Mr. Knight, which I suspended. Right. And that is true. I think I earlier I characterized it as cross, but actually it's direct. It would be. It would be direct of Ms. Voss of Mr. Knight. Okay. Just a moment. Voss, do you have questions, additional questions of Mr. Knight? I do, Your Honor. Okay, you may proceed. Thank you. <clears throat> Mr. 
tonight on 9-17-20. The court ordered that you um, have Bryce evaluated for their weight and to follow the recommendations of the provider, that both parents follow the recommendations of the provider. How did you respond to that order? Refresh my memory. Of the order or your response? You're asking me about something that happened on 9-17-2020, two years ago. I need my memory refreshed. Okay, so I think that the answer is you don't recall. Don't recall. Thank you. Mr. Knight, do you have any, any intention of you know, just quickly getting through this and being done with trial, or is it your intention to drag this out? My intentions are to defend my rights to the best of my ability and my children's rights to the best of their ability, and if it takes forever, then that's how long it will take. Okay, so I'd like to ask that Exhibit 5, um, do you have a copy of Exhibit 5, or should we get that from the clerk? Madam yeah, Clerk, would you pull Exhibit 5, please? Do you recognize that order? Does that refresh your mem memory? Can you repeat the question? The question was, the court ordered that um, Chloe's weight gain issue on case five shall be assessed by a medical provider within three weeks to determine if there is a medical problem and develop an appropriate diet. When that is done, both parents shall assure Chloe remains on the diet. How did you respond to that order? I took Chloe to a Mason Clinic and had an appointment with Therese. Um, there was a recommendation for the Emily program um, to check with, uh, so that they could check for a eating disorder. And when uh, the Emily program was, uh, evaluation had been done, they found out she did not have an eating disorder. They found out they was going to try to provide her counseling free of charge for her anxiety and depression due to the conflict between the parents. Um, do you have any idea why um, that visit to Therese at Mason Clinic is not in the record. Is it possible that you remembered that inaccurately? Is it possible you don't have the paperwork? Didn't you? I testified to how I remember dealing with it. Did you bring Rice to see Dr. Abdullah? I, the nurse practitioner. I and took sorry. rise to many doctors. Can I finish my question, please? The, the, finish the question. Go ahead. Um, I, I said nurse practitioner, but I meant nutritionist or dietitian at Dr. Abdullah's office who referred rice to the Emily program. Is that possible? The Emily program was offered in a couple of different areas, um, and it's been two years. What I do know is I went to many different doctors to discussing this. We had thyroid blood tests drawn to check for thyroid. We went to Dr. Thing. At Healthy Future Pediatrics, I had her checked for thyroid uh, 
disorder, which came back as negative. She was continuing to gain weight. I t uh, tried to put her on a diet, as the doctors, ha uh, numerous doctors had suggested. Miss Voss decided that I was withholding food and saying that I was abusing the child, so she, was, she began using the diet as a tool to harm the child. I got, I got an objection. Objection. He's going well beyond your question. It was well, if you ask what he did, okay. and he yeah, is, I'm telling you. and he's saying that he tried a diet and this happened, so he did something else. So I think he is okay. answering the question. Okay, the allegations of what he. Okay. Well, that's an allegation. I understand that, but that's his perspective, okay. and so do you wish to finish the answer, Mr. Schneider? Yes. So, uh, you chose not to. Um, partake with Mr. Knight's um, um, attempts at trying to help Chloe's diet through the Emily program, and you refused to um, take her to the Emily program, even though we had worked out a way around the temporary order and, the and uh, that required you not to attend appointments, that Chloe would be able to actually attend these appointments had you followed this. But since you chose not to do it that, that way, Chloe was not able to be seen at the Emily program. So her diet has not been addressed, and now she is over 200 pounds. And so the Emily program is um, Exhibit 57. I'd like to hear request and offer. Exhibit 57. recognize that as a record from the Emily program? state it's from the Emily program. TEP. Mm. How they refer to themselves in their record. I cannot say if these were from the Emily program or not. Did you not meet with Genevieve Ingram Jones on October 16th, 2020. She did an intake from the uh, um, through her office for the Emily program, but this is not exactly the Emily program. This is from her office. This was done for the Emily program. This was submitted in ER 904, number 34. Is that correct? Excuse me? I said this was submitted to you under ER 904 as item number 34. Is that correct? It appears to be. And in your responses, you had no objection? Apparently. like to offer this gentleman? Any objections to exhibit no. 57? No. Exhibit number 57 is admitted.
there was a comment in here. I thought I had the page number. Uh, about what um, rice consumes regularly and the record indicated goat milk. Is that perhaps a typo or did the Miss um, Ingram Jones misunderstand? I have no idea how Miss Ing uh, Ingram Jones wrote up her paperwork. Did you report that Rice drinks goat milk? Or did you report that Rice drinks goat milk? From the question you are asking me, you already know the answer that Chloe drinks oat milk. Okay, so it's most likely a misunderstanding. Presumably, yes. Okay. Thank you for clarifying that. Um, So in this record, um, <coughs> you indicated that I had medically abused the children, and that's how you got decision-making. Isn't that true? I told her my perspective on what I thought was going on. Is, is that a yes? I'm sorry to hear your, your last... I said I was my. I told her my perspective of what I thought was going on. Right, but I think that the next question was, "Was that a yes?" And I didn't hear your answer. That's my perspective. I'll take that as a yes. Um, so, if I had ample evidence, if I or even no evidence whatsoever, I just just suspected. Um, if I had, and uh, let me start over. If I had ample evidence that you were not physically or mentally abusing the children but was just unable to accept that information, then I went ahead and made reports to medical professionals and CPS that you are physically and mentally abusing the children. Would that be a report made in good faith? Repeat your question. If I had ample evidence that you are not physically or mentally abusing the children, but but I was just unable to accept that information. Then I went ahead and made reports to medical professionals and CPS that you are physically and mentally abusing the children. Would that be a report made in good faith? Well, Ms. Voss, you do that in bad faith all the time. And wouldn't the same apply to you? If I don't you've do been that. provided ample evidence that I did not medically abuse the children, the court has found four times, the department, um, the SHS has found that I did not abuse the children, medically abuse the children. And this isn't something that you can accept. So how is your report a good faith? Ms. Voss, report? you have medically abused my child over the weekend. You're proving you do it all the time. You do I do believe that you do not understand what you are doing to our children. What is the definition of medical abuse? Would you like to refresh my memory so I can tell you? So you don't recall? Abuse is whenever you're doing something to a child that is going to cause them damage and you are willfully doing this because it has been established through a medical, uh, medical um, MDs and psychiatrists that the child needs to have the medicine. And through your own fears, you have already titrated her off of the medication. So Objection. you are harming my child. Just looking for the definition, not, not an argument. He was providing his definition 
based upon current events. And so that is its definition. Okay. Being our lot for that. Okay. So be it. Um, isn't medical child abuse defined by Dr. Carol M. Jenny, um, who coined the, the term, invented the, the diagnosis? Um, Objection as relevance. Um, this has been brought up several times. And, I, and so I'm going to allow the question to occur. I don't know if it's relevant because it's been brought up and it's been argued about. Um, I'll, allow, I'll allow the question to develop and then we'll talk about the, the, the limiting question. That statement alone is under limiting because the person she is speaking about testified in the 2000 or had testimony in the 2017 trial that had been litigated upon. She is bringing forward, uh, trying to bring forward limiting stuff from previous in her questioning. And so I don't know this person. And so you are asking about a definition, correct? I am. You can ask about a definition. It's not, it's not related to people or events prior to 2017. She asked me a definition, correct? Correct. Okay, here you go. Didn't Dr. Jenny define the term? I do not know what Dr. Jenny defined. Okay, you gotta wait till the question's done and then you can answer it. Okay, go ahead, Ms. Bob. Thank you, Your Honor. Isn't it defined as the instigation, instigation of unnecessary and potentially harmful medical care through the instigation of a care provider? I don't recall. both know where it's defined and that exhibit um, has already been excluded. I believe there's been some testimony about what the definition is. So. We'll move on. Um, ex exhibit 341 is the Consejo records. Thank you. If you could turn to page 44 in that record, 44 of 355. Page 43. 44. Okay. And so, D 
beginning on page 44 and continuing on to page 45. Um, do you see where uh, Leonardo Dragon Alexander informed Father um, that they'd already talked to the school about Rice's 504? I'm sorry, 45. Bobby called to discuss Chloe's 504 plan, and if I had anything to add, I informed Bobby that I had already talked to the school. Contrary to the rumors that Bobby asked for a weekly update, as I see his kids on Thursday, I also indicated that the kids might have ASD, and that he may want to get them evaluated. Do you recall that? Uh, yes. And then further down the page on 45, three days later, he showed up at the Conseil Hall office very angry on 11-15. What made you angrier? Was it that um, Draven had talk to the school? He's been asked and answered from my first half a day of, um, of testimony. I don't recall I this do. being discussed. I don't recall this particular document uh, being brought to the court's attention. I don't. Did you talk about this? Um, I, I believe I asked Draven Alexander whether or not they were involved in that report, his threatening suit against Conseil. But this is a different line of questioning. Okay. And, uh, but I'm going back to my notes if I recall that. So um, you, you can proceed. Go ahead. Thank you. So the question was, what made you angrier? That Draven had communicated directly to the school um, their concerns about rice and 504 issue or that they suggested that both children might have ASD. Um, what angered me on that was Draven had actually told uh, Chloe that she was in support of Chloe's identity crisis and that she was also coming out of it as a as non-binary and stuff and she had reported directly to me uh, um, that she had done that to Chloe when I walked in and sp uh, was speaking with uh, Devin, uh, Devin or the entity of Alexander and she uh, about questioning her on uh, the questions that she had brought forth for uh, uh, and, um, for Chloe, when Chloe started having her identity issues, I wanted to talk to her about the questions. However, Davin um, instead said I was supposed to support Chloe, and that in the support of Chloe, Davin uh, said that she may get in trouble for this, but she was going to let me know that she came out herself as non-binary to my daughter, and I was very upset that the fact that Consejo would Hold actually that. allow somebody to do that. Objection. Objection. Um, any, any exceptions to this? Yes, this is medical statements by a physician to the parent concerning the psychological development of the child, Chloe Knight, uh, being influenced by the therapist. That doesn't fit within the exception sustained. The question was, were you more angry that Robin had communicated directly to the school their concerns, or? I had concerns around uh, Robin's uh, mental state, since she had stated to me that she has Asperger's disease, Objection. and yes. that she felt that Chloe and Hayden may have yes, some sir. other diseases associated with hers. Yes, an objection on that as well. there's an objection and so you asked the question you gave him two choices he came up with an answer that wasn't related to either one of those choices um, you 
asked the same question again, he comes up with another answer that was unrelated to those choices. So um, I will accept that as a no. And with regard to the statements made by um, Dravid Alexander, um, those are still hearsay and I will sustain the objection. You may proceed. Thank you, Your Honor. Eleven fifteen nineteen record indicates your unhappiness with HIPAA. Can you elaborate on what? Can you direct me into what document you're reading from? I'm still on page forty five at the encounter dated eleven fifteen nineteen. Okay. Please um, explain your con HIPAA concerns regarding um, containers. HIPAA concern. I should not have a therapist who identifies as non-binary coming out to my daughter. That is a serious HIPAA violation uh, because a therapist who has influence over a child uh, should not be influencing in them in an identity issue, even if that therapist has an identity issue themselves. So this would fall under a federal regulation, and I assumed it would be HIPAA. Can you explain why none of these records talk about um, gender issues that you're very bent on? Can you ask your question again? Can you explain why neither of these two entries even mention gender issues? I have no idea why they didn't write it down in a proper fashion, ma'am. So your recollection and their records conflict. And your position is that they didn't document things accurately? My position is I do not know how they document their stuff in their office, ma'am. Did you pursue a lawsuit as you threatened? No. Nope. The record indicates um, that you had threatened to sue them um, for matters concerning the mother of his children and his perspective on her involvement in the children's care. Can you explain that? I felt that if a lawful family law order of a parenting plan was put forth to an agency for the uh, care of the minor children, that the agency would be required to follow that lawful order and not allow the mother to make uh, appointments uh, for the children or make any kind of medical decision or influence any medical decision over the child and they had not been following the parenting plan. And so not allow the mother to influence. How does, so the parenting plan is pretty clear in that I have a right to give and receive information. And if the information that they receive influences their decision. Isn't that a matter of fact influencing their opinions rather than my perspective? No, Miss Voss, you threaten, uh, uh, threaten with complaints to uh, state agencies against Conseco. You proceeded with them. You uh, harassed, intimidated, and um, threatened Consejo staff to the point that they're going to not do too much of anything that you Objection. that I have to uh, say. This is unresponsive to the question, and he's talking about facts two years after this particular record that I'm questioning him about.
asking a hypothetical. I was asking about his specific claim here in this record. And, okay, I well, can't go I beyond with... Well, if you with, said if, um, if the mother provides information or does influence the, uh, the, the their diagnosis, I don't remember what word you used. Mm -hmm. If it, it does influence, it's... In, and then you went on from there, and I can't yeah, recall. Yeah, right, right. So you opened up this big door, and yeah. I don't know how to... He responded, I, I think that you did go further than your question, but I think it was a pretty big door. Thank you, Mama. So I'm going to allow the answer, and I'll let you go on to the next question. Thank you, Alex. Turn to page 22 in the same exhibit. 22 of 355. Of, we're on 341, I believe. I, I know. Oh, I'm sorry. 22 of page 355. <laughs> yes. Okay, yes. thank you. Yes. Yeah, too many numbers going on. you feel about Amanda and Lopez teaching Rice to self-harm? Amanda Marquez never taught Chloe to self-harm. Amanda Marquez simply provided Miss Voss with a handout that Miss Voss had requested concerning the around self-harming and Miss Voss decided to file complaints upon that as Miss uh, Marquez was trying to teach Chloe to harm. How did you feel about Amanda trying to teach Rice to self-harm? I had no feelings around uh, Amanda trying to teach Chloe self-harm because Amanda was not trying to teach Chloe self-harm. Didn't you just testify that Amanda was trying to teach? Was not trying to teach. If I testified to that, I misspoken. Amanda was never tried to teach Chloe to self-harm. But doesn't this record make that a part of the treatment plan? Ms. Voss, a part of the reason why that is part of the treatment plan is because Ms. Voss requested the uh, self-harming handout from Amanda Marquez and then took her fears one step further and filed a complaint on Amanda Marquez stating that Amanda Marquez was try, uh, trying to teach Chloe to self-harm and info invoked a state investigation upon Ms. Marquez simply on uh, Ms. Voss's fears. So the first time that Amanda Marquez saw Rice and created this plan, she knew I was going to make a complaint later? Is that what I'm hearing? Ms. Voss, you are very much a person of habit. You do are very predictable on what you're going to do whenever somebody comes in and is not doing what you uh, inform them that they should be doing. So she knew I would make a complaint. I informed her that more than likely there would be a complaint because of your <laughs> history of making complaints against all providers that have ever been associated with Hayden and Chloe since 2009. So you groomed the provider to fear me. Is that correct? No, Miss Voss. You groomed the provider to fear you by your actions previous before Amanda even uh, showed up at Consejo Counseling. You had already been threatening Consejo Counseling through other counselors who you had not liked and had uh, moved on. The only one that you liked was the entity known as Alexander only because she would drink your Kool-Aid. And so that brings up 
brings us to exhibit 214. 214? Recognize that. Did I recognize that? That's your exhibit 214, isn't it? This is an exhibit that has already been filed in this case under 306. I think it's 305 or 306. I'm asking you about this exhibit. This is an exhibit that has already been in place. But I, I'm going to pause for a moment and I'm looking for my exhibit list. So this has already been admitted? Under yes, it's under one? her is 306, it, I believe it is. under. Is it's my medical. between this one and that one? Yes. Okay, so we're going to go to 214 because she was indicating that there is a difference. So we will proceed with exhibit 214. And what does it state at the top? It says provided by Bobby at intake. Which intake would that be? Intake to uh, Consejo Counseling. Okay. And why did you take it upon yourself to provide this to Consejo Counseling without my case authorization history. or consent? Case history. It's case history because I provided my mental health evaluation uh, from Dr. McCollum and Miss Voss's mental health evaluation from Dr. McCollum and the parenting plan and the facts of findings and the last part of the trial to the new counselors so that they would be able to see what a history would be behind the children so that they would have a proper information so they can start a proper care plan that could help the children deal with the stresses of being in a high conflict parental battle over custody. The question was, why did you provide this without my consent? It was a confidential document, is it not? Miss Voss, you have provided my mental health evaluation to numerous different people without my uh, my authority and as I hear it be said once you got control over it you can do anything you want with is what you told me do you have any documentation to support your allegation that I have provided your mental health evaluation to anyone Dr. Langer does not need to have my mental health evaluation, and you've provided that to him, Ms. Voss, under your own uh, testimony and Dr. Langer's testimony. Hmm. That's interesting. Yeah. I don't think the um, court record will reflect differently. Well, the um, thing is, Ms. We're not having a conversation, folks. Ask the next question. <coughs> your desk looks better than this. <laughs> I'm trying. <coughs> Excuse me. And so what I'm hearing is... I was making sure it wasn't this that was making oh, any noise. No, it's I, outside. I, I was the referring to alarm. Mr. Knight, but okay, go ahead. I, I hear that now, too. Okay. Um, because you believe I have shared your evaluation. That gives you authority to share it? No, what gave me the authority is that uh, your psychological history and my psychological history combined together with uh, the intake of the children would actually give 
a uh, psychological provider a better insight of family history and uh, medical issues that may pertain to taking care of and creating a care plan for the minor children. Did you provide them only Dr. McCollum's evaluations? And I, uh, let me rephrase that. Did you provide him your evaluation from Jennifer Goodling, for example? <laughs> Objection, Lemony. In Lemony, the, what she is asking for is asking me to bring something forward through from Lemony, and I am not going yeah, to do that. This has to do with what you provided Conseco, not what happened to Farda. It's purely what did you provide. So, that was, so that was a she's asking matter. me specifically for an item that was uh, under Lemony. It doesn't matter if the item was a birth certificate. It's just it's whatever you provided. No, I did not. Did you provide them the more favorable evaluation of you from Dr. Marianne Krauss or the letters from Dr. Leonard? I provided them with the mental health evaluation from Dr. McCollum from the parenting uh, from the that had been used in the dependency hearing and in the family law case. It was the most recent evaluation that I had, had I had your uh, mental health evaluation to give to them to try to make sure that my children was able to have healthier outcomes for their treatment under a historical medical issue, yes, I would have under an historic for the treatment of the children provided them with your mental health evaluation. So that would be a no, you did not provide them evaluation from Dr. Mary Ann Trouse? No, ma'am. Okay. And the more current letters from Dr. Leiner, that was a no as well? No. Isn't grooming providers to fear me something that was identified as a problem that you have long, long ago. No, ma'am. You're saying no because it, it is long, long ago, aren't you? No, ma'am. Exhibit 11, the investigation from Judy Murray. Objection. Dated, Just a moment. Um, exhibit no. What? Exhibit 11, the investigation from Judy Murray, dated 6-26-12, is under limine, isn't it? Did you say Exhibit 11? I did. Okay. Pardon, are you asking me the question? I am. Well, you should know that. I'm asking you a question. <coughs> An item that is dated in 2012 is covered under Lemony and is not submissible in this case to my knowledge. And that's where we would find the evidence to impeach your testimony, isn't it? I have no idea, Ms. Voss. Um, and I just want to make sure that you, you didn't pull the, the document, but I just pulled Exhibit 11, the, the guardian ad litem report. Yes. Um, Judy Murray was the guardian ad litem in the first two investigations in oh, our case. Oh, 0938028. And then in 2012. And there's another one from 2016 now, okay. 2011. It's a bundle that was separated by um, these two trade emails. So if 
you have long-standing problems that weren't resolved in this parenting plan that you continue to have, that poses a problem for your children, doesn't it? I do not understand your question. And we'll, do you still have Exhibit 341 up? Could you please turn to page 17 of 341? It? Yes, ma'am. Um, doesn't this indicate on July 24th, 2020, right before I filed that status report with the court, um, you had reported um, in the fourth line down that Rice was writing things saying psycho father and suggesting murdering the family. Miss, uh, yes, Miss Chloe was <clears throat> on her uh, tablet looking at anime, adult ne uh, negative black anime that was discussing um, in the, the chats and stuff about making poisons and killing their families. So I was having concerns about the anime stuff. Um, and I believe I was trying to talk to uh, the therapist about it. Did you have concerns that, okay, if Rice did in fact make this report as you allege, why didn't you tell me? Miss Foss, why didn't you tell me anything? Mr. Knight, you had two questions. Miss Boss, you have made it clear that you don't ask Mr. Knight anything for to do anything that you want to do. You simply do it. And for you to try to turn around and ask that question to make me look bad isn't going to work, I don't think. Objection and responses. Non responses sustained. Why didn't you tell me that our child was thinking or talking about murdering their family? Because I told you via uh, an email, and you told me that uh, the um, the a uh, anime was not the issue, and that you started uh, defending Miss uh, Chloe, and you started telling Miss Chloe that Dad was wrong. And when Dad is trying to protect his child, and Miss Voss here is telling the child that Dad's being bad, that's abuse on Miss Voss's chi uh, uh, child because Dad is attempting to try to discipline the child to make him go to a positive manner. Objection. And since Miss Voss continues to uh, tell Chloe that Dad is a bad person. Pause for a moment and there's an objection. Is it objection? Non-responses. No, no she asked me error. why. I'm oh, telling no. her why. The court's going to decide whether it's responsive. I do think it is responsive to the question that we posed. You may be right. What's good for the goose is good for the gander. I'm not sure that was responsive, but everything up until that is, and so I'll sustain your objection. Were you concerned about Rice murdering Hayden or myself? 
Ms. Voss, I have been concerned about Rice's mental health for a long time due to your input. I cannot tell you what Ms. <coughs> Chloe will do because you have so much influence over how she acts. If you truly believed that Rice was intending to murder the family and you chose not to inform me and something horrible were to have happened, wouldn't that be on you? No, ma'am, it wouldn't. Exhibit 55 would be next. Sorry, before we get too into that, I, I just found a couple more questions on 341 before we put but that But we still going to need 355. We are, we okay. are. So we can keep yeah. 355. Keep, keep oh, I'm sorry, not 355. Number 55. 55. Keep it out. <laughs> okay. And so what number were we? Oh, we were on 341 with the okay. Consejo records. Okay. Um, why didn't you get the evaluation for autism spectrum disorder at Mary Bridge as Robin had suggested for both children? Because Robin isn't the decision maker on medical decision making. I decided that I was going to work it through the school system to find out what kind of learning disorder and to see if there was any additional uh, things through the school. And then work it from there to see if we could actually get a psychologist into, into play. Since Draven doesn't have a PhD or any kind of uh, diagnosis abilities, I wasn't going to take her word for anything. And the school evaluation also indicated um, symptoms consistent with autism spectrum disorder, and still you didn't try to get an evaluation. Why not? Ms. Voss, I am taking care of my children in the best way I can, but with you disrupting me every turn I get, it makes it very difficult for me to proceed forward to get the help that I need for my child without you disrupting it and taking it back to make it look like you are a better person by disrupting the stuff that is actually helping the child. Page 105 of this same record. Have you found page 105 of 341? Ask your question. Why 
why did you need um, Amanda to schedule the appointments on Fridays even after Amanda informed you that it was not therapeutically beneficial to have Zoom appointments? Because you were interfering with all the other appointments at other times during the week requiring me to take off time from work. So in order to take your uh, ability to uh, disrupt my employment away, I decided to put it on a day that I did not have to work so that you could not interfere or make me take time off of work so that you could get the satisfaction of interfering with me. Does the parenting plan require you to um, make, or as both, I'm sorry, it requires that parent, uh, medical appointments shall be the priority over all other events and activities? When you're using medical appointments to it's fight yes no with, the, uh, with the other parent, then that uh, 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 aspect of it should only go to the best interests of the children. If the parents are fighting over it, then the one parent needs to take the schedule and make sure that the children is Objection. there so that they can get the benefits from their okay. uh, Pause, pri please. care provider. It, it was a yes or no question about the parenting plan. I'm not <coughs> sure where he's going here. I'm not sure it was yes or no. Why don't you ask the question again and I'll repeat the word. Doesn't the parenting plan require parents to prioritize medical appointments over all other activities and events? stated my answer. Okay, so he provided an answer um, that uh, wasn't yes or no, but what I will say is that is the document will speak for itself. You can ask him about his understanding about that, but as far as doesn't it say that, say the document speaks for itself. Thank you. And then if you ask him what is he, his interpretation of that is, then you get into that. Yes. Okay. And it's Thank prior you. answer. So you're Thank going to say you. the document doesn't speak for itself. You wish to ask that question a different way, I'll let you. Um. And so by requiring the appointments to be on Fridays that coincided with your work schedule in that at that point in time you had Fridays off, correct? Correct. And were you bringing the children to their appointments on Fridays? Were you bringing Rice specifically to their appointments? This is January of 2021. I was taking Rice to her appointments when Miss Boss was not interfering and keeping her from Mr. Knight and keeping her from her appointments. Whenever Mr. Knight had Chloe in her, her, his care, he made sure that uh, Chloe and Hayden both seen their counselors at Consejo Counseling. If there was no, <clears throat> if it was not, uh, did not occur, it was due to the interference of Miss Boss by re keeping Chloe away from Mr. Knight's custody. the person that was bringing rice to the appointments in January of 2021 because the temporary order placed rice primarily with me and they were only seeing you on weekends or was it every other weekend isn't that correct I remember that Ms. Voss was refusing to take the child to Conseco counseling on multiple occasions well uh, she was in uh, Miss Boss's residential care. I can't say exactly which weeks, but it was multiple weeks over a six month period. So it's hard to tell which day she was with me or if she was with me for a six month period because Miss Boss was in contempt of the parenting plan at that time. any evidence to document in the Conseco records you will see that Miss Voss uh, that there's a lot of appointments missed 
that should have been on a weekly basis for the children every single month. If they were not done on a weekly basis, that was because Miss Voss refused to take them on that day. But you just testified that Fridays were your day off and so that you would bring... When Miss Voss would allow me to have Chloe at my house, I would make sure that she got to her appointment. Either it was a Zoom or it was in person, whatever was necessary for the appointment. But most of the time, Miss Voss had Chloe at her house violating the uh, parenting plan. I did not have her in my residential time. I think the record will be clear in terms of the schedule at that time. Let's this ask the next question. Um, Why were you so upset when I brought Rice to Seattle Children's Hospital for crisis services? Which time? Either. Both. Both times. Why do you say I was... Uh, I was not upset. I was concerned. I was concerned that Miss Voss was using her supposed emergency rights to make decisions with police officers and, and third party people to decide that she needs to take Chloe to Seattle Children's Hospital for an evaluation trying to get her input into uh, psych uh, psychiatric care. Um, I was concerned that uh, Miss Voss's psychi uh, psychiatric, her own psyche, may have been a, a contributing factor to the uh, um, display of uh, suicidal tendencies or thoughts by Chloe due to Miss Voss's narcissistic attacks on everybody and she does not have the proper functioning to make an adequate emergency decision. So she drove completely past Mason Clinic, Olympia, Tacoma, Puyallup, all the way to Seattle and said that was an emergency. I do not see that as an emergency. Why didn't you provide me in information about crisis planning or what was going on um, to deal with Rice's threats around that time? I did provide you with all the information that was ne uh, that was provided to me, Ms. Voss, and I increased um, Chloe's counseling with Consejo to four times a month as I had discussed with the care provider from Seattle Children's once they called me on 8 16 20 whenever you had Chloe up there and they the provider said that they had spoken with you so they spoke with me and told me that they thought more counseling would do that they are not in uh, Chloe was not in crisis and she was not going to attempt to kill herself that she simply needed a little more counseling and I informed you of this Miss Voss and then you uh, proceeded to obstruct all the counseling through Consejo, filing complaints on Amanda, the counselor, making false allegations and disrupting Chloe's therapy. Is there any evidence to support any of these claims? Yes, it's real. we already have it uh, into the court findings here. The judge is going to look it all over. Okay. Um, Mason General Cl Hospital Clinic, um, that mental health evaluation uh, why didn't you want Rice seen at Mason General? Which one? Mason General Clinic, the behavioral health evaluation, I believe it was 8, 6 of 20. Immediately you, after. Leave it with them. 8, 6 of 20. Immediately after the um, petition was filed, there was a restraining order. Rice saw the provider, you left the facility. Um, why didn't you want Rice to continue to see that provider? Excuse me, Ms. Voss, are you speaking of the uh, evaluation that I had scheduled at Mason Clinic for Chloe to be done on the 8th? And since uh, that had been prior to the 9-2 of 22 or 20, 
uh, case opening, so the appointment had been set before the case opening, and since I was there to uh, get her into this appointment, however, Ms. Voss had got the temporary restraining order and decided to call the pol uh, Shelton Police Department to try to have Mr. Knight removed from Mason Clinic while he was in the attempt of getting Chloe in, uh, um, into this appointment that Ms. Voss is trying to say that I didn't want her in. And the police officer sat down and looked at the temporary uh, restraining order and looked at the parenting plan and realized that the temporary order did not restrict Mr. Knight from being at a clinic to do his medical duties of providing the signatures needed so that Chloe could have the evaluation on that day. So Ms. Voss, you're misrepresenting exactly what happened there so that you could try to make it look different. of after Rice had the evaluation, which was Exhibit 55, and they recommended that Rice continue to receive counseling there, that they wanted to provide that service, why did you not continue with that Because they told me that since I already had Chloe and Hayden involved with Consejo Counseling, that they would not be able to match the frequency that I had at Consejo as four times a month, they would be only be willing to be able to do six sessions over a certain amount of time. And since I already had an established, uh, established counseling in place for both children, they did not see it necessary to double dip in the county and do a double in, uh, counseling session on the children. So that is why they did not do any counseling at BHR or at uh, Mason Clinic. Mason Clinic passed it back to, uh, to Consejo Counseling. And we're going to stop right there. It's the late afternoon recess. We'll start again at 345. <coughs> 